At 76, Celine Santillan struggles daily with her failing eyesight. Last week was particularly difficult, what with power lines down and the aftermath of Typhoon Glenda. But there were chores to do, so she had no choice but to go about them by candlelight. She fondly recalls living in Samar, where blackouts were easier to deal with. Pwede kami pumunta sa bukid, sa mga nyugan, kapag ano kami dito, wala, wala talaga. Here in Manila, a night without electricity means no sleep for Santillan. She and her family stayed up for three straight nights after the typhoon. Kung hindi makakatulog, nasa labas kami. Nasa labas kami lagi. That was also true for Concordia Children's Services, a home for infants and children up to two years old waiting for adoption. Social workers here took pains to keep 26 babies comfortable throughout the ordeal. The problem is that prolonged blackouts pose risks to children's health. Some medical interventions that we are doing for the children, like nebulization for those children who have asthma, hindi namin sila manebule, so very uncomfortable sila. And uh, aside from that, uh, syempre sleepless nights, very irritable sila, and then yung rashes nila, mas nagtitrigger, hindi lang yung colds, hindi lang yung cough, pati na rin yung rashes nila. Kasi we just uh, had our summer uh, nitong nakaraang buwan, so nagkarashes sila doon. And then ngayon gumagaling na, pero nag-trigger ulit because of no electricity. The workers coped by giving the children a bath more often, from just three times to up to five times a day. Children and the elderly take the hardest blow from power interruptions. And for most of them, especially the poor, there is no other way but to endure the heat and the darkness. Pia Banalos reporting.